Welcome back to the channel. Today we're working on our 10th generation Honda Civic Touring. We're going to be changing the coolant and you should be doing this at least every seven years or 100,000 miles. We're about 92 to 93,000 miles now so I think it's time to do it. This is the 1.5 liter turbo engine so what you'll need is some distilled water, about two gallons and also some genuine uh, type 2 antifreeze coolant from Honda. I got two gallons just in case. I also got this measurement tool here just to kind of see how much we drain out to compare to how much is in the system. I believe there's about two gallons. Or, I gotta double check it again, but we'll see what we can drain out. Got the car up on jack stands. Let's go check underneath. Also took out the uh, underbelly tray. So this is what it looks like under here without it. What we're gonna try and do is uh, I unbolted these two bolts here and we're just going to try to drain from the lower radiator coolant hoses. I've already got this clamp loose. You just need some pliers to loosen it up. Now we're going to pry this off and then drain from the lower radiator hose. We're probably going to get some air in the system so we'll have to bleed the coolant system and get some of the air bubbles out. But let's see what we can do. I'm also going to use some distilled water to uh, flush the system out a few times so that we can get some fresh coolant in. So basically what I'm doing is just prying these coolant hoses open just to leak out the fluid cleanly. I'm trying not to make too much of a mess. And it's going right in here. Okay. So we just finished draining from this hose over here. I wanted to show you guys if you're interested, you can also drain it from here. So this is the radiator uh, petcock. That's where you turn that and you can drain the uh, fluid or the coolant from the radiator itself. Uh, I just found it now. I forgot that I had removed my intake resonator a long time ago. The intake resonator just quiets down your intake, so I had removed it because I wanted a little more intake noise. And now there's access to that uh, drain hose on the radiator, which is very convenient. Next time I will be draining it from there. I think it's a little better to drain from here. It's a little messier, but this is the lowest point of the coolant system, so you're going to drain more from here because it's lower than the radiator itself. After draining the coolant out there, it took about five minutes, we were able to get around three quarts out. So three quarts was able to come out from those coolant hoses. There might be still some residual inside of the engine. If you want to fully drain it, there's probably an engine block drain somewhere, which I don't know where it is. Next, we're going to use some distilled water. You can use uh, the baby version if they are out of the regular distilled water and we're just going to pour it in. We'll do one full fill up and then start the car for maybe like five minutes or so and then drain it all out again. And we're just doing this to flush out as much of the old fluid as we can. And then we will start to put the pre-mixed 50-50 type two antifreeze from Honda. Okay, so I ran the engine for about three minutes. Now we're gonna drain the coolant out again. So I'm gonna let this go for a little bit. All right, so I have a new clamp on. This is uh, one of those worm clamps that you'll see that you use a screwdriver for. And next time we try to do a coolant change, uh, it'll be a lot easier to take this one off versus the other one, so. Got that back on. Now we just gotta put the two screws back here. They just go over the top once you line it up here. And then there's a plastic piece here that you just need to fasten back here so that it holds the coolant hose in place. And then we'll go back up and fill the rest of the coolant and then we'll bleed the system. Let's pour it in nice and slowly. So when you put a light inside of the hole, you'll be able to see how much fluid is left in there. We're still under minimum. Okay, 
We are now in between minimum and maximum fluid. Let's start by squeezing the upper radiator hose over here. So when you squeeze this, you'll be able to see some of the bubbles come out. You hear that suction effect. So you want to do that while the engine is running. So we're going to start the car and see what happens. I don't see any fluid or bubbles coming out, so that's a good sign. I'm gonna go ahead and close the cap. All right, now with the cap closed, we can go ahead and then go to our climate control settings and then leave the fan on low, turn off the AC, and then we're gonna go full heat just so that we can bleed some more of the coolant. Gonna let that run for a little bit. Okay, so I just shut the engine off after idling for about five minutes. Checking the coolant level, as you can see, the coolant went all the way down, so it's way below minimum. You cannot drive it like this. So we're gonna go fill it up again until it's right in between minimum and maximum. And then every time you drive it around for the next few days, Wait till the car's cooled and then check your fluid levels again because you got to make sure that it's uh, within spec because it's going to fluctuate a little bit. All right, let's go ahead and start up the Honda Civic. <laughs> you can hear some of the fluid sloshing around inside of the engine, the coolant. These new headlights are super bright. Hopefully I'm not blinding people on the road. I did lower them a little bit. So you want your heater to blow hot air. That means that it's burping the air out of the system. It's bleeding the coolant system to get some of those bubbles out. Right now my heater is blowing warm air. Hopefully it'll get warmer as we drive on. This right here is my heads up display. It shows me my speed, but it also can show voltage, RPMs, and other things. I just like to show it my actual speed because it's different from my speed on the speedometer. This is our joying nine inch Android display head unit. Doing really well so far, no uh, issues to report. I have a video on how to install this one. Let me show you the uh, high definition camera real quick here. High definition reverse camera, very, very clear, much clearer than OEM, so I'm very happy with this one. That's the active live wallpaper as well. So happy to report this is working great. It's getting really warm in this car right now, so that's a good sign. Just drive it around normally and run the heat on max with the fan low. Doing that for a drive cycle or so. Check your coolant levels when the car is cold and top up as necessary. That's how you change your coolant on a 10th generation Honda Civic with the 1.5 liter turbo. You can drain it from the coolant hose or you can drain it from the radiator uh, itself, the drain plug, and I showed you the location of it if you wanna try. You do have to remove the intake resonator, which is fine. Overall, pretty easy job. I recommend doing it to keep your coolant system healthy. Water pump and all the hoses, make sure there's no corrosion. So this is a video on how to change the coolant on your 10th generation Honda Civic with a 1.5 liter turbo. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you guys in the next video. Have a good evening.